job searching is it's not uh, for the faint of heart, but you need to approach it as if you were managing a project and, and really implement project management techniques. Welcome to Momentum Now by MVP, a career focused podcast that delves into the stories of seasoned professionals, charismatic leaders, and passionate catalysts. Join us as we explore their career achievements, the challenges they've overcome, and their advice for young professionals of color navigating a fulfilling career journey. Today, our co-hosts Bob Brooks and Kara McFarland speak with the VP of Marketing for the Atlanta Hawks, Narcissus Alakani. Narcissus shares her journey, the keys to balancing competing priorities, and how a personal marketing plan could help job seekers secure the right job at the right organization. Hi, everyone. Welcome to the show. I'm Kara McFarlane, and I'm here with my co-host, Bob Brooks, and we are today welcoming Narcissus Alakani from the Atlanta Hawks. Hi, Narcissus. Hello, Karen and Bob. Thank you for having me today. Yeah, we know it's a super busy time for you. So thanks so much for being here and putting time aside and giving advice to MVP fellows, students, people that are early in their careers and barking on uh, making big decisions and how they make the most of uh, of the first couple of weeks, months, years of their career. So thanks so much for being here. Thank you for having me. So Narcissus, we just want to kick it off, right? Like, you know, everyone, everyone has their story, right? Their journey. Um, and we just want to hear a little bit about, or a lot about really, like how you got started at your first job out of college or, and then how did you get to here? Right? Like, if you just give us a bit of an overview, that'd be great. Yeah. Uh, so my journey has been an exciting one. I'm grateful for all the stops along the way. Uh, so to kick it off, I'm from Atlanta, Georgia, born and raised. Uh, my family's from Iran, so I, I'm of Middle Eastern descent and grew up uh, in Marietta, Georgia. And um, I attended Georgia State University. Um, where I uh, got involved in the American Marketing Association and really just kind of found my passion for marketing uh, by taking classes and and just learning more about the field through AMA. Um, took on a number of different internships in college uh, to really learn what it is that I like to do and what I don't like to do. Um, and the cool part about marketing is there's there's so many different facets, right? Um, so my college journey was all about learning about those different facets um, by getting involved. And um, I took a class at Georgia State where uh, they were like, you need to create a marketing plan for yourself and really walked us through the steps on how to do that. And I that was a very valuable lesson for me that I have kind of taken on through, throughout my career and shared advice with others is always create a marketing plan for yourself. And um, a part of every marketing plan is the target audience. So I sat down and I wrote down all the different companies that I could see myself working for. Um, and Turner Broadcasting was one of those companies. Um, I think it's called something different now. I, I can't keep up with all the different names. But um, so I set my sights on Turner and I, I looked up career fairs where um, they would be present and you know, had alerts set up uh, on their job site to, to be notified of future openings. Um, and I met a recruiter at a job fair, uh, built a relationship with her, um, probably was very persistent at the time, mm -hmm. um, and ended up landing a role. They had a trainee program that was very competitive, um, ended up landing a role at, at Turner, uh, my first job out of college. Didn't know anyone there. So, you know, as far as networking um, outside of the recruiter. Um, so, you know, I, I got really lucky, um, but I also, you know, worked hard at it and, and was persistent. Um, so, you know, I thought I, I've landed like this is my career. I'm going to be in TV and film marketing and this is where I'm going to be for my entire career. And um, about five years later, um, there were layoffs. Um, and I was a part of that. I was impacted. And um, like, oh, God, what do I do now? You know, this this whole dream that I had for myself um, just fell apart. Um, and I I stayed open to different opportunities. And an opportunity came up at Stone Mountain Park, um, which is a, a theme park. Um, and they were at the time owned and operated by a company called Hershen Family Entertainment. And they own theme parks all around the country. Uh, so I never thought that I would work in the theme park industry. 
Um, but I was open to it. I was passionate about marketing and I, I took on the opportunity and I'm so grateful that I did. It was an unexpected adventure, um, but I had a lot of great learnings and within that role gained skills um, in, in ticket selling and, and what it takes to sell tickets to an attraction. Um, and the opportunity at the Hawks came up. Um, I, I was at Stonemont Park for about five years when the opportunity at the Hawks came up, I wasn't looking to make a change necessarily, but again, I was open to the opportunity and explored it further. And it seemed to be a perfect kind of mix of my background of working in entertainment and also um, working for an organization that had to, was responsible for driving ticket sales. Um, so, you know, a few interviews later, um, I, I landed this role. I've been with the Hawks um, almost nine years now. Um, started as a manager of advertising and promotions, um, and now um, I'm the VP of marketing and have been in this role about two years. Um, and the question I get a lot is, well, you know, how, how did you work your way up within the organization? Yeah. And again, just kind of staying open to opportunities and, and learning and never, you know, saying no. Um, and, you know, having that similar mindset that I've had in my career of, um, just being open to opportunities and being curious. First of all, I need to say shout out to okay. AMA because I am a <laughs> avid volunteer for AMA as well <laughs> for the New York chapter. Um, and it's great that you started out in college to get that that acumen and that advice. And um, if you're not currently involved, I might have to tap you. Um, but I love this idea that you talked about of building your own personalized marketing plan, right? I just love to like lean into that a little bit more. I know you talked about target audience and you know, where do you want to work? But how does a student, you know, how do we get a student in that mindset of how they need to formulate that, particularly people who are not in marketing, right? Like how do they think about their future plans and formulate that? Yeah, and yeah. if you could make, I'm sorry to interrupt, but if you could make sure that you uh, also give us some insight on the importance of social media platforms like LinkedIn as well. Yeah, so, I think the, the basic part of a marketing plan is what, what is the product that you are marketing and that product is yourself. Um, so really taking a, a deep look at yourself, you know, what are my strengths? What are my weaknesses? If I had to explain myself in a 30 second elevator pitch, what would that pitch say? And that, you know, it sounds easy um, to come up with a 30 second elevator pitch, but it's probably one of the hardest things you'll yeah. ever do because yeah. um, there's so much that encompasses you as a person. Um, but you you have a short window of time often to to sell yourself um, to, to someone, um, to a prospective employer. So um, really thinking about how you want to present yourself first and foremost. Um, and then, uh, who do you want to present yourself to? Like, where, where do you want to land? Who's your target audience? So make a list of those companies. Um, someone at the time told me to grab a, um, we have a Atlanta business Chronicle book of lists, so like grab a Atlanta business Chronicle book of lists, you know, scour it, look at all the different marketing agencies and, and come up with your list and your primary list. And, you know, if those don't work out, what's your, what's your secondary list? Um, and really honing in on those and next take that to a, another level, go on LinkedIn and see who you know that work at these companies. Um, or if you know someone that knows someone, um, we are, you know, six degrees of separation. Um, you can get to anybody. Um, and, uh, you know, once you kind of have that set, really think about your promotion. So how, how are you going to promote yourself? You know, what events, um, are you going to go to, or are you going to go to job fairs? Are, are you going to use LinkedIn? Um, you know, how are you getting your message out there? And then making sure you have your toolkit ready. So um, your resume, your your cover letter, uh, your LinkedIn profile, um, your portfolio, you know, if you're in a creative industry, uh, ha take it a step further, create a website for yourself where it includes all of this information and really package it up in a nice way um, that you, present to uh, prospective employers. And it really makes the job easy. Um, you know, job searching is it's not uh, for the faint of heart, but you need to approach it as if you were managing a project and, and really implement project management techniques. Like I remember having a spreadsheet at the time of like, here's all the companies I applied for. Here's the link to the, um, to the job uh, description. 
when, what date did I apply? What date did I follow up? Did I get a yes or a no? Um, and then you, you go down the list, you're going to see lots of no's. Um, it, it really is a number numbers game. Um, but know that, you know, you after somebody knows, you're going to get a yes. Um, so really kind of taking that strategic approach in, into the job search um, has, has really been what has helped me and, and others. That's really fantastic advice. I love this personal marketing plan where you attack it like a project. You have the 30 second pitch, which is you're right. Is, that is not easy. There's lots of advice on YouTube about the 30 second pitch and the key components and the attributes of that and how you make it memorable and easy to remember. Um, and then the, the website is when you take it to the next level. What about the interview process? And that's something that our mentees have talked with us about and their concerns and looking for advice. Is there anything that you've learned in either interviewing others or being part of the interview process that is worth discussing now for our MVP fellows and folks who are just early in their career? Yeah, the interview process is so nerve wracking, right? Um, and I think that you get better with practice. So. Uh, when I was at Georgia State, they held mock interviews at the Career Center. So taking advantage of those as much as you can. Ask your friends to interview you. Just ask anyone to interview you. Um, and then really um, delving into those potential questions and, and preparing yourself um, with answers. Uh, just being as well prepared as you can be. Also doing your research on the company and, and the people that you're interviewing with is so super important. Um, I can't tell you, you know, how many interviews I've, I've done where, you know, people don't know anything about the, the company that they're interviewing for. And that, you know, that, that doesn't show that you really want to be here. Right. So, so doing your research, um, getting comfortable with, with the content, um, and, and just practice, practice. Uh, also, I, I found what really stands out is telling stories. Um, that that really sticks out in, in the interviewer's head. Um, so, you know, when they ask you a question, don't just answer it, but have a story of, you know, something you've experienced um, that helps that interviewer, helps illustrate it in their mind that, that you understand what they're asking and that you have a relevant example to share. Yeah, that's really important. Um, sorry, Bob, you wanted to jump in. Go ahead. Thanks, Karen. Um, one quick follow-up. What about that last part of the interview when, when the interviewer asks, do you have any questions? How, do, how should our audience approach that strategically? And is there anything they can do to prepare for that? Yeah, always have questions. Uh, don't ever <laughs> say don't have any questions. Um, you know, as much as this is an interview of you, this is also your chance to interview them, to, to know that this is actually a place that you want to work. Um, and there are a lot of great questions out there um, that you can Google to help you um, ask those probing questions to, to get to understand the company better. Um, interviews are tough, right? You're, they're 30 minutes, an hour long, and you're making a, a big commitment, right, to, to work with an organization. So it should work for you as well. So take that time, uh, the opportunity to ask questions, to, to um, know that this is the place that you want to work for. And also take it as an opportunity to really express that you want the job. If, if you truly want the job, um, the people that, you know, at the, end, at the end of the interview tell me that they really want the job, it sticks out. Um, so really show that you are eager for this opportunity and, and grateful for the chance to, to be able to talk to them. And Narcissus, you, in, in the top of this, you talked about, you know, being, um, of middle, you know, being Middle Eastern and Iranian. Um, have you, how have you found that your identity has played into your job search and your career journey? Um, has it affected it, you know, in any way or how have you navigated that if you had to at all? Yeah. Um, well, you know, our identity is something that, you know, we're given when we're born and, and we, you know, we deal with it, you know, all through our lives. And um, being a Middle Easterner growing up in the South, it, it's been kind of interesting, right? Um, you know, there's, there's always something going on in the Middle East that's on the news, right? Um, and there's lots of countries that make up the Middle East. So, 
um, there it's very easy uh, for people to stereotype, you know, um, people from the Middle East, especially around the time of, you know, when 9-11 happened. Um, so really kind of just breaking through those stereotypes and, and educating those around you on, on your culture. I think that's been probably one of the biggest um, challenges um, growing up and that, that kind of, you know, carried, you know, into adulthood as well. And um, I think the root of it is that um, I often have a very different perspective from, from everyone around me. Right. Um, and uh, I used to uh, be afraid to speak up because of that, because, you know, you want to fit in, um, you know, I, I, there aren't very many people, you know, Middle Easterners in the South. So um, you want to fit in, you don't want to stand out. And, and I'm also naturally a bit shy. So I, I would kind of retreat and I'd be afraid to speak up and, and share my different perspective. Um, but, you know, I, I learned the hard way that, um, you know, you are you for a reason and you were in, in the rooms that you're in, you were there for a reason. So, um, you need to speak up and share those perspectives. And I find that, you know, the companies that really do it well have a diversity of opinion in the room. Um, and you are doing not only yourself a disservice, but, you know, the company that you work for a disservice if, if you are not sharing your unique perspective. Um, and that's not always easy to do. I, I kind of overcame these obstacles through time and, and wisdom and, you know, different lessons along the way where, you know, if I didn't speak up on something and later I would, I would realize, you know, shoot, that, that was the wrong decision because I was actually right. You know, I should have shared that. And, you know, as I got more comfortable with it and there, there have been times in, in my career where I've had to uh, make the uncomfortable decision of saying, hey, you know, I'm not so comfortable with this or, you know, I don't think this is really a good idea. And the times that I have done that have always been the right choice and, and the right outcome came out of it. Yeah, that is so important for everyone to know um, that their voice matters, right? And you shouldn't be afraid to use it. Uh, you know, earlier Bob asked about in the, you know, when you're being interviewed, you should ask questions and interview them. Is there a question or a mechanism that you've, you've someone's even asked you or that you experienced that they could ask to help them identify if this place that they're interviewing is a welcoming and inclusive atmosphere that's going to welcome their voice no matter how they identify? Yeah, um, I think an easy way to ask that is how would you describe your company culture? Um, and that's a broad enough question where, you know, people will fill it in with all, all sorts of things. And then you can kind of take it from there and ask follow up probing questions based on that. Um, I always look at, you know, people always ask me, well, OK, wow, you've been with the Hawks nine years. So, you know, what has kept you there? Um, and that's always a good question as well. Um, you, you can tell a lot by by what that person says, you know, um, why obviously they have stayed there that long um yeah just just and and you know what what's important to you what what and asking questions based on that we know that it's a really busy time for the nba and the atlanta hawks um and what i'm wondering about is how any advice on how we should be prioritizing or how someone New, new to the career, their career, or entering a new job, how they manage um, that busy time. It's media week. It was media week day for you this week, and there's recent trades. And I, I learned that you have a, a daily podcast that, that the Hawks uh, produces. So you're doing a lot. How do you manage those priorities and, and any advice for others? Gosh, I may be seeking advice from y'all on how to, how to do it. <laughs> you know, um, you, you can't do it all. Right. Um, and I, that used to bug me, um, uh, because I want to be able to do it all. Um, but it's, it's really about prioritizing. And, and I ask myself a question when I look at my to-do list and I'm like, okay, what is my, what would my boss care most about? Um, that I get done today, you know, what, what would help make her life easier? Um, and then 
also don't inundate yourself. You know, my, I have my, you know, my, I'm a master of lists. I love lists. So I have my master to do list. And then, you know, on a post-it note every day, I just write two or three things that are super important for me for the day to get to. Um, and, and that's, you know, what I, what I focus on and, you know, being a leader, um, you also need to prioritize and make time for your people. Um, and, you know, they come to you with questions and, you know, making sure that, that you are available for, for that as well. Um, and then I think taking care of yourself is, is a big part of that. Um, because if you, if your cup is not full, you, you know, you can't give to others. Right. Um, so, um, today was a super busy day and, before this podcast, I actually went into our meditation room and did a meditation uh, because, you know, I just had to recenter myself um, to really tap into, um, you know, what's important in the, in the message that I want to get across in in this interview. Um, and, and I had to make time for myself to be able to do that. Um, I also uh, went uh, and, and became a yoga instructor last year um, mm -hmm. because I wanted to kind of dive deeper into that um, as from a wellness perspective and, and creating balance, but also share that with others. And a couple of weeks ago, we, um, I taught a yoga class on the Hawks practice court mm. uh, to my department. So that was super rewarding to, to just be able to, to share that with people. But, you know, just prioritizing self care, um, is, is one of the only ways that you can tackle all your other priorities. That's such great advice. You were talking about promotions earlier. So you talked about your track and how you went from, from Turner to Stone Mountain and then landed at Atlanta Hawks. And then Atlanta, you've been there for nine years and you've transitioned to these different positions, right, with, within the Atlanta Hawks. So, you know, as young people think about their career, not just their first job, but as they progress and they want to be recognized and promoted, you know, what would you what would your advice be to them, particularly to you know, women and people of color who sometimes don't always, um, you know, elevate themselves, right? And showcase their work. And sometimes, you know, their talent can be, you know, understated because they may or may not feel comfortable or or whatever, whatever the various reasons are historically or current that, um, that might plague them. What would your, you know, advice be in terms of how they they get that acknowledgement and accolade and they can help with their promotional journey. Yeah. Um, you know, I have always been really bad at tooting my own horn, um, and, and promoting myself. Um, I tend to just kind of get, get my job done and, and work really hard and hope that that speaks for me. Um, and I've been lucky in my career in that, you know, I've, I've worked for great leaders um, that recognize that and, and become my champions for me. So, you know, one strategy, I'm not saying it's right or wrong, um, is, is to, you know, do your job well and, you know, build, build relationships with those champions within your organization, whether that's your, your boss or, you know, other um, executives within the organization, because it's, it's always better to have somebody else speaking for you than yourself. Um, but I also recognize the need that it's super important to advocate for yourself. And I, I've tried to become better at that. Um, and, you know, the way I, you know, I don't, I don't know if I'm the right person. <laughs> to be the way to do that. I need to get better at it. But um, there, there is a good way to advocate for yourself without coming across as, uh, you know, very braggadocious and um, there, there's a right way to do it. Um, and I, I encourage you to, to do what feels comfortable for you. And I'm not great at it either, <laughs> but I try to force myself to at least communicate some of the wins. They might be collective wins, but to just let people know that there is activity, meaningful activity happening that's contributing to the company. And sometimes that's in a meeting, sometimes it's an email. Um, I still don't do it, I think, well enough or often enough because it's uncomfortable. And, uh, yeah. and I totally, I totally get it. That's why I asked that question. I kind of want to know if I was the only one. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. And that's a great point. Talk about your wins and, and write down your wins, whether it's you have a document on your desktop, just record that. I, I, I do do that. Um, I, I 
you know, any project, you know, any metrics behind it, make sure you're saving that so that you can communicate your wins. That's great. I, I the other point you made about um, having individuals in the organization that you can connect with and garner um, advice from, and maybe even they can help promote some of those wins right across the organization. I was recently speaking with a coworker and asking um, them if they had a mentor. And they said, I've never had a mentor. And I was kind of stunned. I was like, what? Um, and we talked about what might be her best next step and how she find the right person. What advice would you give someone like that that hasn't really thought about the, the importance of having a mentor and how to do it and then how to use that time? Yeah. Um, so mentorship is, is interesting. It's, you know, you can approach it several different ways. So one, informally, just go out and find your own mentors. If there's someone you really admire, send them a note, uh, you know, if you have their information or send them a note on LinkedIn and, and just ask, you know, um, asking to be, will you be my mentor? Maybe a bit much on the first, um, <laughs> uh, initial, uh, reach out, but, you know, maybe ask to set some time with them. Um, there I've taken a lot of just cold calls on LinkedIn, um, just people who want to pick my brain and get advice and then build the relationship from there. Um, there's also, you know, lots of formal ways you can, uh, find mentors. I think when I first got introduced to the concept of mentorship, it was through the AMA, uh, and they had a formal program where that you signed up to be a mentee and you signed up to be a mentor and then you were matched with people. Um, the Atlanta Broadcast and Advertising Club does that as well. So um, I'm one of their mentors um, and every year get paired up with someone based on, you know, what what um, career they're seeking. Um, so those are some ways you can find mentors. And then once you build that mentor relationship, make it easy for them, uh, you know, take the initiative in setting the meetings, um, take the initiative in leading the conversation. Uh, mentors are often very busy. Um, so make it as easy as possible for them, the least amount of work on their part, and you know, figure out what, what it is that they need, you know, what keeps them up at night and, and help them. Um, and that really stands out in, in a mentor's mind. Um, you know, if, if you just say, hey, I, I want to set some time with you and then have nothing to talk about, no objective, no specific questions to ask, it's, it's kind of a waste of both of your time. So um, really le take the initiative to lead that relationship and provide value to your mentor. Yeah, that's so important that, you know, it's a two-way relationship, right? So you provide that value, but mentors also need to understand that they receive value from those conversations that, you know, whoever they're mentoring, whatever the age group, because, you know, it's different levels, right? But for, for us, it's college students that they're bringing a different perspective as well that could yeah. add to them as well. So I love that. Um, just to flip it just a teeny bit, right? We've been talking a lot about what students should do, right, as they enter the workforce. But I'm also curious what your thoughts are on like what hiring companies should be doing to attract diverse um, talent, right, into their pipeline, right? And I'm going to use Atlanta Hawks as an example because clearly you've been there for so long right, that you must like it. So I'm, I think I'm going to ask the question you talked about earlier, which is like, why do you stay at Atlanta Hawks? Why have you been there for so long? What do you love about it and its culture? And what advice could you give to other companies leveraging what Atlanta Hawks does really well? Yeah, I think one, what has kept me here is, is the people um, really great leadership from ownership down to our executive team, um, you know, really care about their employees and, and it shows, um, and really care about the city of Atlanta, um, and, you know, utilizing our assets to help lift up, uh, the city of Atlanta and the communities that, that we work in and live in. Um, so I think that's a big piece of it. Also, um, I think the authenticity factor, um, you know, if, if you say you're going to do something, you stand behind it. And I think this organization has done that through and through. Um, and people see that. Like I, um, you know, when I'm interviewing people, I always ask them, you know, why do you want to work here? 
And um, the people that um, tell me like your morals and values align with mine show that, okay, like, yes, you know, we, we are doing the right things. We are walking the talk or talking the walk. And um, I think just being authentic in everything that you do, it, it shows. Thank you for that. I know, I know, Bob, I, I go off topic a little bit. <laughs> <laughs> Narcissus is saying all this good, juicy yeah. stuff. Right? Oh, it's, great. It's, it's part of the reason I love working co-hosting with you. It's fantastic. Um, <laughs> I, one of the things that um, when Karen and I were assembling uh, this podcast for MVP, we were wondering about advice and, and how we tease out advice for young professionals. You've done a lot of that today, but I wonder if you had that opportunity to write yourself a letter, right? To put it in the way back machine and you've received a letter from your, uh, if you could send a letter to, to your 20 something year old self, what might be in that letter? What advice would you include? And what, what would you, um, what would you want that 22 year old narcissist to, to realize as she embarked on a new career path? Yeah. Um, I can't imagine the feeling of, of being 22 and, um, and just the world is yours, right? And embarking on a career journey, it's very scary, actually. I, I remember that feeling. And if I had to go back and, and talk to my 22-year-old self after I graduated, I'd say to have no fear that everything is going to work out, right? Um, and, you know, think about what's the worst that could happen when, when you're evaluating an opportunity and walk yourself through that outcome. And um, often when you really think about it and drill it down, the worst that can happen is not that bad. Um, so, so get yourself comfortable with that. And, and then, you know, once you do, don't, you know, don't be afraid to fail. Um, because, you know, there's always a lesson in that failure. Um, you know, whether it worked out or didn't work out, there's always a lesson to be had. Um, and I think following your gut, um, I'm, I'm a true believer in, in following my gut and there have been opportunities that I've turned down and opportunities that I've taken. Um, and, and by listening to my gut feeling, um, and I used to question it at first, but, you know, looking back at all the decisions that I have made, I'm like, okay, you know, that was the right decision. And, um, you, you know, the right decision to make and just listen to that inner voice and it will always lead you in the right direction. I love that. It's so profound. It's hard to do, right? But it is very profound and it works when you do it. <laughs> Narcissus, thanks so much for being here today and digging into the details of your career and how you've been part of events and organizations that focus on entertainment and broadcasting and now the Atlanta Hawks. Um, in terms of personal development, and wrap up here, are there any resources or strategies that you've found particularly helpful as, as someone of color and someone that might not have the cultural background or the folks around you? Are there things that have really helped you in, in development over the years? Yeah, I'm trying to think in terms of specific resources. I think I'm signed up to like every newsletter there is out there. <laughs> so just taking in information, um, you know, going to networking events, listening into webinars, talking to people, I think is probably the number one way that you learn, right? And talking to people that are different than you um, and have different backgrounds um, from you and, and being comfortable with that. Um, I, I think I've learned the most through experience um, and just kind of immersing myself in, in these situations to be able to have um, diverse experiences. Awesome. So I just want to do like a little quick, my little recap from my head. So develop your personal marketing plan. Yes. Use your voice whenever you yes. can. Uh, go with your gut, right? Don't be afraid of your gut and your inner and your inner voice. Even when making decisions, celebrate your wins, hopefully loudly, as loud as you can, what you feel comfortable <laughs> with. <laughs> right? well, tell stories, and tell stories. Cause they're tell stories. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. And join local organizations like the AMA or other organizations that align with your industry to build your network and to, um, you know, 
help help advance your career. Did I capture everything, Bob? What I'm yeah, yeah. Uh, and one other one, uh, be fearless. Uh, you know, what's the worst that can happen? So be fearless. And yeah, that's another one. That's what I wrote down. So I'm putting that up as a post it note right above my computer here. So absolutely. I love uh, that. Uh, well, you made that recap sound really good. <laughs> <laughs> it was. It was. <laughs> Narcissus, thank you so much for spending time with us and sharing your advice. I, I know that our community is going to really appreciate it. So thank you for that. Thanks for paying it forward. <laughs> thank you so much for the opportunity. Thank you. And good luck, everyone. <laughs>